Well, to discuss this, I'm joined now by Patrick Rajolina in Paris. He co-wrote Madagascar's constitution and was an advisor to the former president, Ari Rajao Nari Mampianina. And in Antananarivo, we have Jael Borgia. She's a journalist and the CEO of Tanala Productions. I thank you both for joining us here on the Newsmakers. Gail Borgia, let me start with you. Are we possibly on the cusp of real trouble here because of this cosmic battle between two men? It's very difficult to anticipate, but uh, since the poll day, um, there is a lot of trouble um, on both sides. Both uh, candidates immediately criticized the uh, Electoral Commission, uh, especially Mark Ravalman, the, the defeated candidate. Uh, he um, uh, made an announcement on his uh, public uh, TV channel uh, saying that the choice of the people uh, had been violated. Uh, he called on the people of Madagascar uh, to defend uh, their choice. Um, and uh, he, um, he's sure that uh, the result published by the Electoral Commission is not credible. Uh, so in a week, it's uh, been the third uh, street protest. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, we might think that um, it, it can go, go worse. Patrick, is Mark Ravalomanana contesting it because of sour grapes, or does he have a strong case? What we can see today, the situation is, uh, is calm in the capital, and there is no troubles in the, in the deep country of Madagascar. Yesterday and last Saturday, there was an unauthorized uh, demonstration with only uh, tear gas and a few injured people. But what can we say uh, today about uh, the claims of uh, Mark Ravalomanana? I don't know, because uh, he's saying the claims to the high constitutional course in Antananarivo, and so they, they study these, these claims. There is 300 claims, 200 from Mark Ravalomanana, and 75 from the president, uh, Andriy Radzuelina. And so we, uh, we are waiting for the, the official results from the high constitutional courts. But what can we say today? I think the situation is, is quite a little clear today. I think the game is over because there is 500,000, more than 500,000 votes for uh, Andriy Radzuelina. Uh, report to uh, Mark Ravalo Manana. So I think uh, we have now to, uh, to, to receive the, the official result. Mm -hmm. And I think now everybody must to go to work. Okay, so Gail Borgia, do you agree that the game is over and that the opposition needs to accept the results? Um, this is what the, the, the international community says. Uh, this is what the international observers say. Uh, they hope that um, both candidates will accept uh, the final result. Uh, but it's uh, very difficult to know what will happen in the following days uh, uh, because um, uh, these two men have been fighting for um, 10 years now, and they are the most important political figures in the country, and uh, they have a lot of supporters. And what I've seen in the streets is very, very angry people, and they um, uh, are, and they criticize uh, the Electoral Commission, even if they don't support Marc Rabalman, even if they don't support Andre and Duan, uh, they uh, think that they had been something wrong, there, ha there has been something wrong with the Electoral Commission, and they want to know the truth. That, that's what people say in the street. Right. Patrick, more than two-thirds of Malagasy's live in extreme poverty. Yeah. The economy is not doing too well. And as we heard from Gail, these two men have been battling each other for more than a decade now. Is it a fair question from the outside looking in to ask whether these two men are holding the nation hostage to their own personal tussle amongst themselves? Today, uh, I think uh, we have to, to, to build a, a new Madagascar with uh, President uh, Rajoelina or President Ravalomanana. This is the first fact for everybody, not only for the international, for the, the observers of the international community, United Nations, African Union, European Union, SADC, and many, many observers. There is thousands 
of yeah. observers who say that the elections were calm. There is fraud, of course, but in the two parts, first. And the, the, the second one is, it's not only the international community who wants uh, peace and democracy in Madagascar. There is entrepreneurs, the workers, and the national uh, uh, NGO also. We want peace in Madagascar, we want to work. Because, as you say, there is a lot of poverty in Madagascar. We need to build many things in Madagascar. That's why we are waiting very quietly the official result of the High Court, of con High Constitutional Court. And I think the, the pronostics from everybody, even the journalists, are difficult today. Right. Because all the Madagascan people, very, and in the country, in the deep country, they want to work. Right. There is only demonstration in the capital, Antanarib, but there is nothing in the deep country of Madagascar. Okay. The deep country so of Madagascar is a victim so, of okay. security since a long, since a long years ago. Right. Okay. So they want peace and democracy. Okay, so let me ask Gail Borgia about that. Gail, does that ring true to you that in the deep country and in the rural areas, I guess, you don't have this sense of protest. It's only in Antananarivo and in the city centers. There's an urban element to the protest. Is that fair? Uh, indeed, uh, Patrick Radzwill yeah. is right. Uh, protesters um, are only in the capital in San Nariv, and on the, in the rest of the country, it's very calm. And especially because um, the, the rabble Manana supporters uh, live in the central part of the country, and especially in the capital, Anton Nariv. Uh, it is where he got um, uh, the, the, the biggest amount of uh, voters. But André Zouan uh, got um, his vote from uh, the coast, uh, from uh, the rest of the country. So that's why uh, we can say that the country uh, is divided into two parts, people supporting Radzwell and people supporting uh, Mark Raval Manana. And uh, you have to know that uh, usually when, um, uh, usually it's the capital that makes, uh, uh, the, the, that is the core of the Malagasy politics. That's why when there are protests, they usually happen in the capital and Tanariv. So this is a kind of logical what's right. happening at the moment. And, and Patrick, for those who look at it and they look at the history and they see that Wajolin had ousted Raval Manana in a coup that was supported by the military in 2009, and now he's won the election, and you have the other man crying foul. Does it suggest that no matter what, even though there is a democratic election, whoever wins has to have the backing of the military? Well, I think it's a, it's a democratic election, because I talk about the observers of the international community. But I, I want to talk something about uh, what says Gail. Uh, the president-elect, uh, uh, Andrei Radzorn, elect, uh, I, I hope so, uh, Andrei Radzorn uh, was not only um, elected by the coast, but also in the central part of Madagascar, because he wins more than 40% in the central part of Madagascar, uh, especially uh, with the, the, the poor people, uh, the, the workers, but uh, uh, it's not true to say that uh, President uh, Radzuel is only elected by the coast, because we make only one country, and we need the development for every Madagascan people. There is no coaster, there is not Highlanders, there is only Madagascans. So it's, uh, it's not good to divide the people of Madagascar. The Gail. President uh, okay. and Radzuel is elected, right. maybe, by all the Madagascans. Okay, Gail, similar question to you, and it will be my final question. Same question that I asked Patrick in a slightly different way. Is it easier for Andre Rajalina to be elected because he is more preferred by the country's very strong military? 
Um, I wouldn't say so, because uh, uh, what happened in 2009 when the army backed on Hadzwell uh, for uh, what uh, was considered at the time by the international community as a coup, um, it's a, a different situation now. Uh, Andre Hadzwell uh, got prepared very well for this election. He hasn't taught for almost five years. Um, I've been living in this country for seven years, and I'm you know, I'm a journalist here, and, and I've never heard of him for uh, almost five years. And he mm -hmm. came back in 2018 with a new party. Uh, he said uh, he studied abroad. So he got really ready for this election, and, and financially speaking as well. So um, I wouldn't uh, uh, put the, the, the military, the army, in this, uh, uh, in this context. Um, but what, what I, I said earlier was that Andre Hadzwell got the biggest amount of his voters in the coast, and Marc Havalman got the biggest amount of his voters in the central part of Madagascar. So there's a clear division, even if it's the same country, of course, and uh, um, they are all Ma Madagascar people, but there's a clear difference, and that's why uh, it, there, there are trouble in the central part of the, of the country, and especially in the capital. Okay. Gail and Patrick, we'll have to wait for... What the Constitutional Court has to say, we'll be keeping a close eye on Madagascar. But for the moment, I'd like to thank you for joining us here on the Newsmakers.